All right, so we're just talking about the different parts that actually make up the whole module here. So first we've got our cells. That's basically this, this chunk here, we'll say. After the cells, we get the whole module. So the cells are what's doing all the work for us. That's we have our encapsulant next. So on the front, that's our glass. I can be pretty rough on this side. That's our front side. Back side, not really true anymore. Okay, this is just a plastic, basically plastic. Hi everyone, I'm Evan from Stardust Solar. Today we're doing, going to do a quick overview of two different options for racking and attaching to an asphalt shingled roof. One will be the base plate style and another will be the more classic leg bolt style. Let's get to it. For this particular attachment system we need to have a leg bolt that's going to hit the truss and underneath the, the shingles and attach to the structure. This can often be the most time consuming and painful part of the whole job. What we're going to want to do is mark off on the roof ahead of time where all of our trusses are going to be. And then once we have our roof marked, we can go ahead and start attaching our feet. We can drill a small pilot hole, slightly less than the shank of this slug, and we can fasten our foot to the roof. We need to release the shingle in that area so that we can slide our flashing in, and then we can attach our footing through the flashing. The amount of torque we're going to have to use to fasten the foot to the roof is dependent on the roof type, including wood, the moisture content, and the age of the roof. Your general rule is going to be stop drilling the bolt in when the washer here begins to flex. Be careful not to over tighten because that could damage the seal or strip the hole, reducing the pullout strength of the lug. Now that we have our feet in place, we can attach our rail using the supplied hardware. All we do is line up the channel with the rail, tighten to the proper torque specifications, and we're done. So now that we have our racking in place, we can give it a tug, it's not going anywhere, and we can go ahead and install the rest of our system. Some newer systems will use a base plate instead of the lug system. These are attached using manufacturer specified screws, usually a metal screw, 10 on either side, and that's going to give us the pullout strength that we need. In, and it saves us the time of having to locate our trusses, so it speeds up your install time. Also install the flashing. This process is similar to the other system. We simply pry up the shingle gently, place it over top, and seal it down with our butyl sealant. We can attach our foot to the base plate using the supplied hardware. I put multiple modules together in series, so I take the positives and negatives of each and I string them along to make a string of modules. That's what we call a whole bunch of modules paired together in series, it's a string. And then if I take multiple strings or multiple panels, if I just take a whole bunch of modules, that's when we get to the array level. Basically your whole system is your array. Okay, what's the power optimizer? That's the, that's the little extra box that gives the, gives the microinverter brain to a string inverter. You want to oh, use okay. microinverters if you're doing a string system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what the, uh, what the optimizer does, it makes it so that it has a, a fixed output current and a fixed output voltage. So we know what that is. And it's going to mm -hmm. make sure that it never sends too much to the inverter. So the optimizer is going to protect the inverter from ever exceeding those values. And as long as we follow the manufacturer specifications, just like with our microinverters, we're going to be safe. For lithiums, so I'll keep sprinkling some lithium ion uh, information in. Their big advantage is that energy density. So if I wanted to take my cell phone battery and have an equivalent uh, charge to it in lead acid batteries, this would be a very heavy phone. Okay. That's kind of the idea of energy density is how much, how much space, how much volume does it take to get the same amount of energy out? 